Good morning, new song. It is great to see you. Would you stand up and worship with us today? Let's put our hands together. Waking up knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living with you I made my decision You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder Forever young in your love This freedom's untainted With you, a moment is wasted See the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white, turn to color. Good morning, everybody. My name is Drake. Special thank you for coming today on this exciting Sunday. Uh, hey, we're going to kind of get started with some things here. We got a couple of Connect cards, you know, located at the front of the um, packets there. If you're sitting in the front row or the back, they should be located either underneath you if you want to grab those. There's two Connect cards. There's a blue one and a black one. The first one is the blue one. That's going to be if you're a first-time guest. You fill that out, that out in its entirety, or if you have any updated information if you moved across town or something like that. The second Connect card is a black one. The black one is going to be that you put any praise reports or prayer requests on those things. Uh, fill that out, and it's you know put everything on there that's kind of bugging you throughout the week or just the little things, the big things. Nothing's too big for God. So fill that out. 
And then um, every Tuesday, the staff will fast and pray over those Connect cards to be able to uh, put that. And then we come together as a family and pray over those. If you um, need more time, the ushers will come by and uh, you can drop those in after video announcements. Um, but if not, there is two uh, black boxes at either exit of the uh, worship center here. You can place those inside of there. Uh, if you need more time. Do, throughout the week, if you need uh, connect cards, you know to fill that out. Go out to newsongbismarck.com and uh, click the connect button there and you'll be able to fill that out and then you know the church will take care of that there. Um, there is also one more packet uh, in front of you there. They should be the five ways to give. That will kind of describe uh, different ways to give. You know, if you want to give mobily or you know th through your tithes and offerings there. So um, those are just some information. Check that out. Uh, see some different ways to give there. Um, so we're going to go uh, pray over our connect cards and pray over the tithes and offering here. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you that everyone came to church today. Uh, just an exciting day that we can just be together as a family and to be together as one. I just pray over the uh, tithes and offerings and just these prayer connect cards that, um, you know, the people fill out their hearts and desires, God. So I just pray over these and the tithes and offering, and I just thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you want to turn your attention to the screens, we got some video announcements. Hello, it's me again, Danny. I'm proudly representing Kingdom Kids, the children's ministry at New Song Church. We want others to know how amazing this ministry is and how much growth we've had in the last six months. On any given Sunday, 20% of attendees in service are children. We had a record-setting Sunday in April of 120 kids. That means we need more helpers. More children's ministry volunteers means more growth in our ministry, a safer atmosphere, and less burnout for the dedicated volunteers that minister to your kids every Sunday. We have two goals. First one being to have 40 people sign up to volunteer. That doesn't mean every week or even every other week. Just serving once a month will greatly improve our ministry and your personal growth. Secondly, once we grow our team, we will be able to have classrooms available for all ages at all services. Maybe you just drop off your kids on Sunday and run, or you've never even been back in kids ministry, but this is what we're about. Kingdom Kids is dedicated to seeing that each child is welcomed into a safe environment and known by a trustworthy leader that helps them experience the love of Jesus. Your kids do play, but they also fellowship and pray for each other. They discuss and learn a lesson from the Bible. They do a Christ-centered craft. They worship God together, and they even do connect card time. Does that sound familiar to you? It should. This ministry is such an important connecting point and a place to grow for these kids and families. There is no better place to strengthen your identity in Jesus than in the body of Christ. That's for you, that's for me, it's for your kids, and that continues when we serve God with our talents and our time. These are just a few areas that we need help in, and we know for a fact that all of these areas facilitate an environment of growth in God's kingdom. And don't worry, we have training for you in all of these areas. If you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? Sign up sheets are everywhere. You can pick the service time, you pick your favorite area, you choose your involvement level and we will be back to you with all and any questions you have. You gotta understand, you could facilitate over a hundred kids hearing the gospel and experiencing the love of Jesus every single Sunday. Be one of the 40. Be a part of what God is doing in the spiritual growth of our children. Get ready for Family Camp 2018, August 16th, 17th, and 18th. Our church family will go to the Camp of the Cross in Garrison, North Dakota for our annual Family Camp with Luke Holter as our guest speaker. Go online, visit the access booth, or stop in the office for a registration form so you can sign up for the early bird pricing. Well, good morning, New Song. How are we this morning? Good. And so here at New Song, we believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that verse is on our wall of our worship center. It's on the wall of every worship center in a four-square church across the world because we really believe at the heart of everything that we do and everything that we believe is that Jesus Christ, the one that we read about 2,000 years ago, is speaking to us today, and he's speaking to us forever, and we get to live with him forever. And that's an amazing thing, isn't it? 
It's amazing. And, and so the thing that that also means is that he, as he still speaks to us today, we get prophetic words. We get words for healing. We get all of these amazing things. And this is Joni. She's a part of our prayer and prophetic team. And she has a word uh, of knowledge for healing for us today. So let's direct our attention to Joni. Good morning. If someone here has uh, um, sores in their mouth and they're having trouble swallowing, and someone has a rash, and um, I guess that's all today. <laughs> awesome. So if if that's you, if you're like, wow, like that's actually something I'm dealing with, I want to encourage you to take that step of faith. Joni and her husband, Frank, will be back in room 107 back here in the hallway, our prayer room. They would love to pray with you. They'd love to believe with you for healing and because uh, our God can heal us. Isn't that true? Amen. Because he is a God of miracles. And so uh, as we continue in worship, if that's you, take that step of faith. Take that step and go receive prayer because uh, just see what God will do through that because he's a God of miracles and he wants to bless us. So would you please stand with us as we continue in worship?
your goodness, God. We thank you that you're the light in the darkness, God. This next song that we're gonna sing has been a song that's been kind of an anthem for us at youth this year. And um, the name of it is Pursue. And it's all about us reaching in and pursuing our Heavenly Father. So as we sing this, I just encourage you to just press in and just encounter God today. Let's sing this together. I close my eyes to see my King and Majesty. Your grace compels my soul to love and draw. heart we give you our soul we give you our mind in this place God we just say God we lead us to you God as this song says forever Lord we will pursue you you are our priority you have our attention now until forever God we surrender we surrender our lives we surrender our heart we surrender our mind all to you would you change us would you rearrange us would you make us into your image God so we love you. We appreciate you. Father, we would be remiss in this place. Uh, as, as we know this week, we are going into Memorial Day. God, we thank you for each person, God, that has given their lives, that have given everything they have to serve our country, to keep each and every one of us safe, that we may be able to have the freedom to worship. 
and to worship your name. And so, God, we thank you for every great thing that you've done. God, thank you for every person who has given, who has sacrificed so that we may be able to have a freedom to worship. And so we love you. We praise you. We give you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we give God some praise in this place? Well, you may be seated. You may be seated. Welcome. Welcome to church. Uh, we uh, decided to do something a little different today. It's, it's, uh, it's Youth Sunday. It was, you know that there are graduations taking place in our city. And uh, today we decided to Kurt, uh, you know, schedule it and you know, I get the opportunity to, to preach today. And also we have our youth worship team up here. Um, and so, yeah, some of the best. I love these, these kids and great things happening. And, and so... Uh, just this morning, I want to encourage us uh, to lean in, and I believe that God's got some, some great things for us. And so, uh, it's going to be a good day. It's going to be a good day. So, if you have a Bible, I want you to turn uh, to Joshua chapter 1. Uh, Joshua chapter 1, uh, where we're going to get started. We've been in a series um, entitled, Yesterday, we're looking and examining the Old Testament. Um, and inside of the Old Testament, uh, pulling out applications that uh, may uh, that will apply to each and every one of us in, in, in this place and, in, in, and outward uh, of this place. And so... Uh, we want to encourage you to, to lean in, and, and I believe that God's going to speak to each and every one of us in this place. Um, and just to kind of give us some preference just as to what's taking place in the scriptures here is uh, uh, Joshua is about to, uh, he is being installed as leader of Israel. Uh, Moses has passed away. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1 here as Moses has passed away. And now we find ourselves in this position where uh, uh, God is now speaking to Joshua to say, uh, it's your turn to lead. It's your turn to move forward now. You're responsible to lead Israel. And here we have it, where we pick up this portion of scripture, thank you, where, uh, where all of Israel is now in this position where now they're ready to figure out who, who's going to take over, who's going to lead. And here we find Joshua in this position where the Lord is speaking to him, and he's, uh, he's ready to go. So if you have a Bible, why don't you turn to, to Joshua chapter 1 uh, with me, and we'll look at uh, what's taking place here, starting in verse 1. It reads like this, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is a, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross to the Jordan River and go into the land I'm about to give you, to the Israelites. To the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon and from the great river of the Euphrates to the, all of the Hittite country and to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all of the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be very careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from the right or to the left, so that you may, but, but that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate night and day, so that it may be. That, excuse me, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I love this. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Let's pray one more time. Jesus, we give you everything in this place. Father, we just say, have your way. Thank you, Jesus, that you are, you are in this room. You're in this house, God. And we ask right now, God, that as we are in this place, that you would just show us your glory that we may be able to see you, may be able to know you, maybe we'll be able to experience you. And so, God, we give you everything. We love you and we praise you. God, we ask that you would, you would remove every distraction so that we would be able to hear from you. We'd be able to know you. We'd hear from you, God. We just need you. So we love you we praise you. In Jesus' name, we all said 
Amen. And amen. Oh, man, it's a good day. It's a good, good day. So, uh, I grew up in uh, Viva Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, you're already laughing. Well, <laughs> you're probably like, we can tell. <laughs> uh Man, I love where I come from. Speaking of which, um, I don't know if you've heard the news. We got a hockey team, a professional hockey team, and we are in the Stanley Cup final this year. And so it's amazing. You're cla- I didn't do anything. I just, I'm just a new fan. But, um, yeah, it's exciting because Las Vegas doesn't have professional sports until now. Now we got a hockey team, and it's just God's, I guess, intention because, you know, I'm a Packers fan, and we like to win. And so now he said, Reggie, you need a hockey team that's going to win too. So I guess that's how it works. Um, and so now we're in, the, we're in the Stanley Cup final, and I pray we win. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I grew up in Las Vegas, and, and, you know, one of my favorite things to do, you know, a lot of people – go to Las Vegas for vacation, and the favorite thing for people who live in Las Vegas is to get out of Las Vegas. Um, and so, you know, I, my family and I, our favorite tradition, you know, school would get out, um, summer's rolling in. Our favorite tradition was to go to California, uh, sunny West Coast California, hang out on the beach, go to Disneyland, you know, check out Hollywood, all that fun stuff. But my favorite thing uh, was we used to go to Six Flags a Magic Mountain. Now, if you've never been to California or if, uh, you've never been to Six Flags, you got to check it out. It's, a, it's the best experience of, of all time. I, I love it. It's, it's so much fun. Roller coasters everywhere. Just a, a great, great experience, right? And um, I'll never forget, um, I was about 12, 13 years old, and there was a roller coaster at Six Flags. It was called the Goliath, right? It was just green um, and orange roller coaster. Now, the Goliath at one point in time was the tallest roller coaster in the United States of America. And so 12, 13-year-old Reggie was like, I'm, I'm going to conquer this roller coaster. Like, I'm watching online. I'm watching film on it. I'm like, I'm, the, I'm learning how the roller coaster turns. I'm preparing, you know. I'm like, I'm getting myself ready. to go. I'm like, I'm taking down. I feel the David in me ready to take down the Goliath roller coaster, right? And so I'm like, I'm packing stones in a slingshot with me because I'm ready to take this thing. I'm ready to do this. I'm excited. I'm riding the roller coaster. I'm, 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 I'm going to do it. I'm going to conquer this thing. It's huge. And I'm a roller coaster fan. I love roller coasters. And so I'm pumped out of my mind to get ready to ride the Goliath roller coaster. So finally we get to Magic Mountain. We get on the, you know, to, into the park. And I said, I can't ride the Goliath first. You know, I got, I got to go to, you know, the other roller coasters. I had to stretch first. I got to liberal. I got to get ready um, before I got to, I'm going to, I got to go conquer this thing, you know. So I'm getting all these other roller coasters, and I see it in the distance. I see the Goliath. I'm staring it down as it's staring back at me, and I'm looking at it, and I'm going, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to conquer you. Um, but I realize roller coasters are bigger in person um, than they are on the computer screen. And so I got to the Goliath, and I realized uh, this is just, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> And so I'm with my dad, and, you know, we get in, he looks at me, and he says, Reggie, you ready to do this? Um, and I can't let my dad down, you know, because I have to be strong for him. So, um, so I'm in this position where I say, yeah, I'm ready, kind of. I'm just trying not to pee my pants. Um, and so I'm in this moment, and I'm, you know, waiting. And so the lines to get on the roller coaster are true California fashion. They're like two hours long to get on this roller coaster, right? So I'm waiting my turn. And like the anticipation of it is like the worst thing in the entire world because I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally we get up to the front and my knees are knocking and I'm just as scared as I'll get out. And I look at my dad and my dad looks at me. He's like, are you ready to do this? And I was like, and I looked at my dad and I said, I don't think I'm ready. I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can really hop on the roller coaster. And my dad looks at me in a true good father fashion. He looks at me with a sentimental face, and he picks me up and puts me in the roller coaster, locks me in, and we go. And um, I might have died that day, but I, but I made it. I love this scripture because 
Here we have Moses, who is approximately 120 years old. He is 120 years old. The Lord has spoken to him and says, you're not going into the promised land. You, we, we know now Moses, he's, he's done something he's not supposed to do. And so God tells him, he's, he, you're not going into the promised land. Um, somebody else is going to lead the people into the promised land now. And so now he's 120 years old, and he says, I, I can't do it. I'm not going to be the one. And he looks for somebody who he's going to appoint to do it. And he finds Joshua. Joshua has now become his aide. He's become his right-hand man. He's been serving. He has been faithful. Now, here we are. We have this moment where Moses has passed away, and there is a 30-day period of grieving. They are grieving. They are mourning the loss of this man who has led them from captivity in Egypt. He's led them through. They have witnessed the power of God through this man. They have witnessed it with their very own eyes as they have seen him put his rod in the, in the, or his staff in the water and watch the water split. They have seen him raise his staff over the armies of Israel as they are in battle and watch as God does amazing things and watches them uh, to succeed. They have seen him participate. They have seen him hear from the voice of the Lord. And now we have it where he is dead. He is gone. And now they are grieving and they are mourning. And they look at Joshua, and they see this moment, and the Lord speaks to Joshua and says, you're going to be the one to lead. You're going to be the one to lead them. You're going to be the one to take them into the promised land. Now, Joshua himself, he, he, he wouldn't be a young man because he's been with Moses his entire career. He's been with Moses his entire season of ministry. And so he has been watching this whole period of, of, of life happen too. The 40 years of wandering, the 40 years of all these. He, he's been part of all of these things. He's seen it himself. And the Lord continues to reiterate to him, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. He's walking up to something he has been preparing. He has been told he's going to be the person that's going to lead. But yet now in the face of all of it, what's his response? Is he going to do it? Is he going to say, I don't, think I, can, I don't think I can hop on this. I don't think I can lead. The Lord speaks to him. He says, be strong and courageous. He reiterates it over and over again, even before that. In Deuteronomy, we find him the moment where he is being appointed as leader. He's been chosen by Moses in public and appointed in private by God in the tent of meeting. And the Lord reiterates to him, be strong and courageous. And now again in Joshua chapter 1, it is reiterated again, be strong and courageous, Joshua. Be strong and courageous. Matter of fact, be strong and very courageous. Why, why does he keep saying these things? Why does he keep reiterating these things? If you have, a, if you have anything to take notes with, point number one will be this. is because Joshua was faithful. Joshua was faithful. You see, I believe the reason that Joshua was chosen in public is because he was faithful in private. You see, the lifestyle of Joshua was this, is that he was an aide. The word aide could be um, uh, replaced or switched out with the word minister. And now when we think of minister in our culture and today, we think of the word minister as, 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 as a pastor, as a person like myself ministering to, to you today or having the privilege to do so. But the word minister actually is translated or the actual definition of it is servant. So he was a servant of Moses. You see, for each and every one of us, we are all ministers of the gospel, a.k.a. we are all servants. And the question that we have to ask ourselves, the reality that we have to face is what are we serving in public or what are we serving in private? Because it is the reality that we are seeing in this moment that now Moses has chosen him. And it's not because he's better. It's not maybe because he's the smartest. Maybe he's not the best looking. Maybe he's not the most qualified. But his heart to serve in private got him excelled and exalted in public. This is the reality that we're looking at with Joshua here. He was faithful. You see, here's the reality with Christian, Christianity today. It's us, as all of us as people. We... And, I'm, and I struggle with this, too, is that we get ourselves into a position where we get selfish with salvation, don't we? It's easy to check ourselves, check the box. I've accepted Jesus into my life. I go to church maybe once a week. I pick up my Bible every now and again. I've heard the word. We get selfish of salvation, and then we don't ever serve anywhere or anyone. And this is what the Scriptures teach us, is that Joshua was a servant, 
He was the aide. He was somebody who was trusted to. See, Moses is the leader of Israel. And thus, for him to be that close to the leader, which means he has to be somebody who served before nobody, everyone else saw him. His heart never changed. He was always a servant. Thus, God is saying, Moses or Joshua, you got this. Be strong and courageous because you're faithful. You are a minister. You are somebody who is a servant. You are a person who is more qualified than you think you are. Be strong and courageous because you got this. You got this. He was faithful. He was faithful. When people don't see you see, we live in a culture where it's like, I, it's funny because, uh, you know, we, we, for me growing up, I, 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 I was, I'm a, I'm a PK, I'm a pastor's kid, right? My, both my parents were, were pastors. Uh, my mom still is in ministry. My mom travels and preaches all over the place. You know, my, I'll pick up the phone and be like, hey, mom, where are you? She goes, I'm, I'm in the Bahamas preaching right now. I'm like, well, lucky you, click, you know. <laughs> Suffering for the Lord, I guess, you know. <laughs> And, but you know, what's funny is, is people always say stuff, you know, well, how did your mom get that? How did that happen? How did that happen? It's because I can tell you that my mom is someone who was faithful when nobody saw. My mom was somebody who was supportive. She works hard. She lives out. She believed. And now God is using her at her age now, but maybe feel like, see, here, here's, here's another thing for some of us. Is we feel like God can only use us when we're in our prime, a.k.a. when we're young. When some of us are young. But God does not see that. Moses is 120 years old. Or we see that Joshua is in an older age. God can still use you no matter where you are, no matter how old you are, no matter where you feel like you are, what kind of qualifications do you feel like you have of yourself. God can still use you if you decide, I'm going to be faithful. If I choose to be faithful, no matter where I am, no matter where I go, God can use you and he will use you friend God's not looking for the most qualified person he's just looking for somebody who says I'm, I'm going to be faithful I'm just going to do it I'm just going to serve wherever I can it's uncomfortable for me but you know I'm going to do it I don't get the chance to you know I'm not perfect by surely I'm not perfect by any means it's the grace of God that I have the opportunity to stand upon this stage but I'm not absent we got to do stuff around this church. People ask, what do you do all day as a pastor? I scrub toilets sometimes, you know. Stack chairs. Serve people. Faithful. And usually, when we're faithful in private, God will exalt us in public. God will make us leaders. He'll put us over things. See, for some of us who are single in this place, maybe you got to be learn how to be faithful with who, what you are. Maybe be faithful over the finances. Maybe be faithful over the things before God blesses you to have a, 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 another partner in life. Maybe in this place you're, in the, you're, you're saying, God, help me, I, I, need, I need a better job, I need more money. And God is saying, maybe if you're faithful with the finances you already have, I will bless you with more. Maybe you're in this place you say, God, I, I, need, I need some more. God, I need some. God said, if you're faithful with what you have, I will exalt you. I will give you more. But it starts with us being faithful with little. And he'll make us ruler over much. Point number two is this, is that it wasn't going to be easy. The journey wouldn't be easy. The scriptures would teach us is that in the last chapter of Deuteronomy, we find that Moses is, is, is looking, overlooking the land. The scripture teaches God looks at Moses and says, I have to show you, you can't go to the promised land. You're not allowed to go to the promised land. You've led Israel far enough. You're not allowed to go to the promised land, but I will show it to you. So he takes him to this high place, and now he's able to see the promised land. He's able to see all the way to Lebanon. He's able to see to the Mediterranean Sea. He says, this is the promised land that I'm going to give you. This is the area. This is the land that I was promising the ancestors of the people of Israel that I would give them. And then we flash forward to Joshua chapter 1, and we see that God only shows Joshua a portion of the land. He doesn't show him the area of Jericho. He doesn't say, this is the area that you're going to go into. He doesn't show him. 
the journey wasn't going to be easy. They were going to go have to fight battles. But I love what the scriptures teach us in this moment as it says this, is everywhere you set your foot, I will give you. See, here's the, here, here's the cool part about this, is that we hear things like that and we're like, oh man, that's awesome. I love it. That means God's going to bless me. God's going to give me stuff. God's going to give it. And God is saying, yeah, but guess what you have to do? You've got to set your foot to it. You see, here's a problem that a lot of us have, and I know I'm the first one to say it, is I sit and I wait for God to bring stuff to me. But yet God is teaching us in this moment, is he need, that we've got to step out in obedience. We've got to step out in faith. We've got to move ourselves. We've got to set our feet to the areas that we want. So here's the reality. And I love the, the part that he says after that. He says, and no one, no enemy will stand against you for the rest of your life. You know what that means, right? Is that the things that you've been praying for, you're going to have to defend. The things that you have been praying for, the things that you've been earnestly asking God for, that means you're going to have to defend it. You're going to have to fight for it. And nothing in the process of that's going to try to come against you will ever take it from you. So that means that marriage that you've been praying for to be restored, you're going to have to defend that. That thing you've been praying for, God, I'm not going to allow another child, I'm not going to allow my child to, to, to dive in into negative things and fall off the face of the earth. I'm not going to let that happen. You've got to defend that with prayer. You've got to saturate it with believing of the, the word of God that says that nothing is going to happen. You've got to defend whatever you have been praying for. That's the thing that Israel has to do. Because if we would know, they never even got the chance to experience the full land. That God had given them. They got they they stopped in one spot. There was more opportunity for them to experience. They just didn't take it all. But everywhere you set your foot, God will give you. You just gotta go get it. And then when you get it, you've got to be prepared to defend it. You gotta be prepared to keep it. I never forget when I was a kid. Uh you know, elementary school was, you know, for me, like I, I said, I grew up in Las Vegas. And, you know, you would go to elementary school. And, you know, believe it or not, I was kind of like the, you know, the like the lunch school. I was kind of like the hustler in lunch. So, like, I would get like, you know, I wanted the kids Capri Sun, so I'd trade him, you know. Like, I would trade, I would try to figure out, like, okay, you know, I want the best lunch. So, I see that he has a Capri Sun and she has the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So, if I can, you know, figure out a way to give her my nasty food and trade it with him, I'm, I'm going to try and take the deal, right? So, and so, <laughs> that's how I, I had to learn business decisions at a young age, you know, <laughs> and figuring it out. And so, I'll never forget, though, this, this one kid, he had something that I really, really, really wanted. It was a snack, and back in the 90s, it was called a Wonder Ball, right? It was like this ball of chocolate, and then on the inside, it had, like, more candy in it. It was, like, the worst thing that you could give your kid, um, but they gave it to him at school, so the teachers had to deal with it, not the parents, you know? And so... Um, it was this Wonder Ball, and it was awesome. You know, the commercials were like, you know, it was like you have different treats inside of the chocolate. You never know what you were going to get. If it was going to be like, you know, uh, um, you know, Skittles one day or it could be something else. And you didn't know until you start eating the chocolate what other great thing you were going to get inside of the treat. And they had, a, you know, the commercial was like, what's in the Wonder Ball, right? And there's all these kids like dancing and singing, and they're like, what's in the Wonder You know, and I was like, I'm jealous because I want one, the Wonder Ball. I want the candy, you know what I mean? I was, I was, they got me, you know, they got me. And so I'm in this moment where now they're like, this kid has it, and I got my eyes locked on it. I'm like, that's it. That's it. I'm ready. I'm going to take it. That's the Goliath now. See, I've been training. And so, like, there's this moment. The Wonder Ball is in front of me. And so I try to trade him, and I say, I want that. And he looks at me, and he's like, no. I was like, why not? He goes, because I worked hard for this. I had to do chores so that my parents would let me get this snack. Listen to me in this place. Is what you work for, you have to defend. He wasn't going to let me get that from him. No matter what I did, no matter what I tried, no matter how many times I tried to, 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 to you know, talk, you know, smoothly, whatever, whatever I could try to work out, whatever deal, he was not going to let me get away from him what he considered to be his pride and joy, what considered to be something that he, he loved. What you want, 
you will have to defend. What you pray for, what you care about, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, friends. And if you believe it, you must have to defend it. If you want it, you have to defend it. The journey wasn't going to be easy for them. They were going to have to face all sorts of all sorts of armies, all sorts of things. But in the process, be strong and courageous, Joshua. Be strong and courageous. The journey's not going to be easy. But be faithful. Some of us in this room need to know the journey's not going to be easy. But be faithful. The journey's not going to be the best one. But be faithful. You may have hardships on the way. You may be confused. You may be hurting. But please, hear me in this. Be faithful. Be strong. Be courageous. I love verse 7. I love what it says here. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. And then verse 8, it says, is keep this book of laws always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will have a prosperous life. He's telling him to make sure you remember the word of the Lord. Remember the word. Remember the scriptures. Meditate on it. Keep it upon your lips. Meditate on it. Think on it night and day. What do you fill your mind with? See, these moments where Joshua, he could be focusing on this moment where I think the Lord is speaking to him, right? Where he says, keep this on your mind. Keep this on your lips. Because in the process of leading, the process of following this this journey and serving Israel, he's just one person in the mix of having to do this great task that is ahead of him. And it's easy for us to get caught up on the great task ahead. We can get so caught up in the things that we have to do. But he says, no, preoccupy your mind. Fill your mind with the word of the Lord. Meditate on it day and night. Keep it on your lips. Rehearse it. Then you will have a long and prosperous life. If you don't hear anything, hear this, please. Is this, if there is anything, it is the scriptures, it is the sword of the spirit that guides us, that leads us. It is the word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path that will lead us through every single journey that is not easy, that will lead us through every moment that is hard, that will lead us through every moment that is discouraging. And it is this book that keeps us faithful. That we remind ourselves that if we can just meditate on the scriptures, if I can just keep it on my heart, if I can just keep it in my mind, if I can just keep it right here in my spirit, it will guide me to where I am supposed to go. You see, I can't come up with the answers on my own, friend, on how I'm supposed to live my life. But what I do know for sure is that in these scriptures, there is a guide. It is the cheat sheet of life where I know I will be blessed if I just take a step forward with it in front of me. This is the God we serve. So he says, this journey is not going to be easy, but keep this word locked inside of you. And remember, also, I love what he says, remember the words that Moses spoke to you. Remember the advice of the people. Remember the advice of the people who invested into you. Remember the advice of people invested into you. And remember and meditate on the word of the Lord. And you shall not be shaken. You shall not be shaken, friends. Finally, point number three is simply this. As we get ready to close, is this, is God is with them. That's enough all by itself. That is enough all by itself to be confident in the fact that I can do all things that God is with me. He says, finally, he says in the scriptures, have I not commanded you? As I'm sure Joshua's knees are knocking and he's afraid and he's looking at the task at hand to know that he has to be the one to lead Israel through the whole situation. He says, have I not commanded you, Joshua? Have I not commanded you, Reggie? Have I not commanded you, church, to be strong and courageous? And then he goes on, he says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
So that means if I decide to stay here, God's still with me. But the better part is if I decide to do what God has told me to do and gave me a, a command to do and said to me in this is wherever you go, I will go. The land that you go to, I will give to you. He's with me. The job that you are frustrated with in this moment, he's with you. The place where you feel like you're discouraged, God's with you. The place where you feel broken, he's with you. I told the story in first service was two years ago. My dad passed away. And I remember... I went to bed before he passed away. It was like a Tuesday. I went to sleep that night and I had this dream. It was my, my dad and I, we were walking on a path together. We were walking on this road side by side. And I remember in the dream, he stops and he looks at me and he says, Reggie, it's time for me to go now. It's time for me to rest. I said, what? No. My dad was my, my hero. My dad was my favorite preacher of all time. Someone was close to me. And he looks at me in the dream and he says, Reggie, it's time for me to rest now. What? No, we got, we got to go. We got to keep going. We got, we got a mission ahead of us. We got things to do. We got people to see. No, it's time for me to rest. Nah, we got, Dad, come on, man. It's not, it's not time for games. It's not time for joke. We got to go. We got to keep moving forward. I remember in the dream, my dad stopping me and looking at me. He goes, no, son, it's time for me to rest. Woke up from that dream and thought to myself, like, what does that even mean? My dad was in the hospital at that time. He had a stroke that led to a brain aneurysm. So he's in the hospital and the doctors are telling us he's going to be great. He's actually on the mend. Things are looking great. He's actually recovering not realizing that a day later, after I had that dream, my dad would pass away. He would pass away. Broken, I'm confused, I don't know what to do. Sad, and I don't know what my life is gonna look like. But I remember the words that my father spoke to me in that dream, it was kind of crazy. It was, he looked at me and said, it's time for you. You got to go. You got to move forward now. It's time for you to begin to set the new trail. I've got you this far, and now it's time for you to go. You see, here's the reality, church. Some of us, we are in this position where we are looking at the line in front of us, and we're saying, I don't know if I can cross it. And God is saying, yes, you can. You can do it. Just go move forward. Trust me, if you're, I, I'm faithful even when you're not faithful. When the journey isn't easy, I'm going to be there with you in the process of it. And guess what? I'm with you. Guess what? Don't, sometimes we forget that this was all God's idea. I didn't plan this earth. I didn't create it. I didn't make my own plans. God did it for me. It's his idea. It's his plan. I can't move forward on my own. I need a savior. I need Jesus. We all need Jesus. The same words that God spoke to Joshua are the same words that God speaks to you today. Church, be strong. Be courageous. In the midst of every doubt, in the midst of every fear, in the midst of every worry, in the midst of every concern, be strong and be courageous. But God, you know, I don't know, God, if I can do it. God, I don't know if I can step up to the plate. I don't know. No, be strong and courageous. God, I don't know if I can. 
God, don't you see me? Don't you see my sin? Don't you see my iniquities? Be strong. And I love this. Very courageous. Now he puts the nail in the coffin and say, no, you're not backing out of what I already called you to do. You're not backing out of the fact that you've already accepted this calling and what you're supposed to do. Be strong, church. Be courageous. God has a plan for us. And it is our responsibility to begin to walk it out. Be strong. Be courageous. Be strong. Be courageous. Be strong and very courageous. Have I not commanded you? He says. Be strong and courageous. And the Lord, the Lord, I love what he says, the Lord, your God. the Lord your God that I am your God's way he says the Lord your God meaning I'm with you I'm there with you in the process I'm there with you in the fire I've got your back the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go wherever you go I'm reminded of the goodness of God. Even when I feel like I'm by myself. Even when I feel like I'm struggling. Trust me, I do too. I struggle. I mess, I make mistakes. I mess up. I'm a sinner. But he goes, have I not commanded you? Be strong, be courageous. Have I not commanded you, church? In the midst of every struggle, he's the God of your success. He's also the God of your defeat. And in the midst of it, be strong, be courageous. I'll close with this final story. When I was... (laughs) kid it revolves around my father again but remember these neighborhood bullies walking around and threatening to fight me threatening to jump me try to beat me up mug me I remember I ran home as fast as I could my dad was in the side of the house and uh, he was Every dad has, you got to have a chair, you know, right in front of the TV. My dad has a chair right in front of the TV. And, you know, he was, he was in this mid-afternoon nap. It was like on a Saturday, mid-afternoon nap, and hanging out there. And I remember walking and running in the house. Look at my dad. These guys are trying to get me. They're trying to beat me up. Older kids. He's trying to jump me, trying to steal from me, trying to take my bike and all these things. And, my dad looked at me without a hesitation, jumped out of his chair, ran outside, and looked at where these kids were. He found them, and I remember he spoke in that dad voice. You know, you know, you know the dad voice. We've all heard it every now and again when you're doing something wrong and you just hear that voice, that booming voice come out of nowhere. He spoke in that voice. And I remember those kids never came around and never messed with me again. Understand this, is that the God of heaven, the hound of heaven, will he not do much more for you? Your circumstances are coming against you. Will he not move? Yes, he will. He will move on your behalf. He sees you and he knows you. He will be with you wherever you go. Can we stand together? And I want to pray. I want to pray for people in this place. You've been perhaps dealing with the spirit of fear. You've been struggling, not knowing, anxiety. I want to pray for you in this place. For those of us who say, God, just make, God, I want to trust you more. 
So with every head bowed and every eye closed, God, you see us in this place. You see each and every person. God, I pray right now by the power of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Right now, God, for every person, we know that the scriptures say you have not given us a spirit of fear, but God, of love, peace, and a sound mind. God, well, we know we can be strong and courageous because you are with us. You are for us. You are not against us, God. What nothing can stand against us, Jesus. And we pray right now, Holy Spirit, would you begin to move in power in this place? Would you encourage us? Would you challenge us to step out of our comfort zone? Would we know your goodness? Would we know your grace? God, we pray right now right now in the name of Jesus God would you fill us with the Holy Spirit that we would walk out of this place with a boldness like never before Holy Spirit we ask in the name of Jesus right now would you change us God would you convict us God right now in this place would you call things to order that way we may be able to move accordingly of how you have called us to move God will we step forward and everywhere we step our foot will we place our foot that, that is the land that you would give us. God, would you give us a boldness and a strength to defend it, God, and nothing will come against us, God. Would you help us to keep this word, the scriptures upon our heart? Will we meditate on it night and day? Will we keep it upon our lips so that we may be able to live a long and prosperous life, God? Will we remember these things? Would we be faithful, God? We give you all that we have. We give you our heart. We give you our soul. We give you our mind. We give you our attention and we say have your way it is in you that we live and we move and we have our being so have your way in our hearts have your way in our lives we give you it all we love you we praise you in Jesus' name in the name of Jesus we all said amen amen, amen. god bless you church hey right. good job reggie what a message Okay, if everyone would please join me as we pray over our connect cards this morning. Extend your hands with me. God, we love you so much. Lord, just as you spoke through Reggie, Lord, you are calling us to so much more than just ourselves, God. And so today I just, I thank you for the steps of boldness and of faith and just writing these prayers on these connect cards, God, that we just bring them to you and we lay them at your feet, Lord. And we just ask you to have your way, God, that we trust you. We know that you are working on our behalf, whether it feels like it or not, Lord, whether we can see you physically working or not, God, God we know that your word says you are always moving on our behalf. And so for these prayers written down on these cards, God, I just pray. I pray for a manifestation of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to break addictions, God, to, to restore relationships, Lord, for financial provision, God, for children to come back home, God. Whatever the prayers may be, Lord, we, we write them down in faith because we know you are good. We know that you are faithful, God, and that your mercies are new every morning. So we just ask for you to pour your spirit out on all of these situations and the circumstances that are both written on these cards, God, and the ones that are unwritten, the ones that are unspoken, Lord, in the depths of our hearts. And God, for these praise reports, Lord, we just stand in victory with our brothers and sisters, God, just declaring your goodness, Lord, declaring the victory that you have over this life. God, over the, the things that may hold us back, Lord, we just celebrate your goodness, Lord, and all of the ways that you are moving, that you are constantly moving, Lord, that you never leave us to our own devices, God but you are always seeking after us. You're always pursuing us and you're always working on our behalf. And what a great God we serve. And Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, Lord, we also just want to take a moment to reflect upon what this means. God, we thank you for the sacrifices, the ultimate sacrifice that was paid by so many men and women that have gone before us in this great country. God, we, we, we pray for the families that have also sacrificed, Lord. And so right now we just take a moment to reflect on what that means and, and the sacrifices that they've made for this country. God, we just declare your goodness. We declare your faithfulness, Lord. And what an honor it is that you would want to partner with us in these opportunities to reach people around us, Lord, to make us whole. We are grateful for who you are and what you do, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what a message by Reggie today. I don't know about you, but I'm personally, that's right. I'm personally leaving here feeling convicted and encouraged to go out and to be strong and courageous. And 
You know, maybe you're here today and you have not t yet taken that step of faith to, to surrender yourself to Jesus and to say yes to Jesus. And we want to help you with that today. If that's you, we've got our next steps booth here located to the right-hand side of the stage. And there's somebody there that's waiting to talk with you, to pray with you, to really help walk you through what that means to make the best decision of your life. So if you're here today and you want to say yes to Jesus for the first time, I encourage you, please don't leave here without visiting the Next Steps booth. Or even if you want to rededicate yourself to Jesus or just want to know about how to grow deeper in your faith. We'll get a free Bible in your hands and just help you walk you through that process. And then you hear Kurt talk about it every single Sunday that the longest walk can often be from that chair to that prayer team over there. We've got incredibly dedicated people that are waiting to pray with you, to walk with you, to help you with whatever it is that you're facing. Please don't leave here today if you have any sort of a prayer request. And we also have a phenomenal care ministry here that there's, again, really dedicated people that want to help walk you through some of life's difficulties that may take a little bit longer. You can call our church office. You can go on to newsongbismarck.com, click the care ministry, and they'll help you walk you through anything that you might be going through. And then finally, you hear us talk about, us, about it every Sunday, about getting involved and serving, about how we all have unique gifts and we all have unique talents that God has woven into every single one of us. We are all called to minister to those around us. So if you're here today and you've not gotten plugged in yet um, to serve, we've got a ton of different opportunities for you. You can go on to newsongbismarck.com. You can click the serve button and you can find all the different areas that are, that are available to you. We promise we'll get you involved and we'll get that ball rolling and you will not regret it. So if you would, join me as we close with our series verse. Maybe. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. Psalm 119, 105, and 106. Have a great week, church.